Hi folks and welcome to your Jersey immediate post Fashion Sakala press conference reaction pod coming to you in association with Forest Precision Engineering. My name is Alec Anderson and I'm recording this little video about 7 o'clock eh, on the evening of Thursday the 23rd of February 2023 which means as far as I'm concerned the weekend has begun. This interminable midweek with no Rangers games eh, to take our mind off the build up to Sunday is finally over. Tell your gaffer tomorrow, that's it, it's a long weekend, you're not going into your work on Friday, but uh, the hard work is starting for the Jersnet team, because we're going to provide you with content all the way through to, and including Sunday's final against the other mob uh, at Hamden. And as I say, it's been absolutely unbearable, uh, this eight-day period from the final whistle and the fantastic plastic of the Tony Macaroni on Saturday, through to Nick, um, Grandmaster, Martin Luther, John Knox, Walsh, blowing the whistle to to start proceedings at Hamden, three o'clock on Sunday. Seems to be the longest eight days uh, in my life. I know earlier this season we had eight days between what is, what was surely a more important game uh, that the two legs of that tie with PSV Eindhoven to get Rangers into the Champions League, back into the Champions League group stages finally for the first time in over a decade. But at least right slap bang in the middle of that eight day period between those two legs, we had a two each draw at Easter Road. We had a game in the middle of it. Um, we dropped points. Um, John Lundstrom gets sent off incorrectly. Alfred Morales gets himself sent off because he's kind of selling jerseys. Perfect fodder for Rangers fans to, to vent as much spleen uh, and as much nerves as possible uh, halfway between those two super tense games against PSV Eindhoven this week, no such luck. I don't care how many press conferences have been thrown at us from, from Hamden and from Ock and Howie over the past few ways, it's, the past few days. It's just been drip feed stuff. Uh, the bare minimum to keep us going. We need something to get our teeth into. Um, I, I get so desperate that on Tuesday night I was watching the, that Champions League tie between Liverpool and Real Madrid at Anfield and I was thinking to myself, well, we played Liverpool in this competition in the group stage, home and away. Celtic played Real Madrid in the group stage of this competition, home and away. The aggregate score, Rangers lost 9-1 in aggregate to Liverpool. Celtic lost 8-1 in aggregate to Real Madrid. So really, this uh, Liverpool Real Madrid could be a kind of, you know, a warm-up almost, a, a gauge of how things are going to go at Hamden on Sunday. And I thought it was a great idea, a great analogy, um, a great method of analysis for the first quarter of an hour when Liverpool were 2 nothing up. Uh, but as Real Madrid banged in five more goals without reply, I thought, no, that's a stupid idea, Alec. Obviously, that was Giovanni Van Bronckhorst Rangers who got scaled by Liverpool. Uh, Michael Beale is the real deal. The new regime will uh, get off to a flyer a proper flyer eh, on Sunday at Hamden. Listen, guys, don't worry, we're going to have eh, our usual Friday night podcast eh, tomorrow, our Friday night preview podcast. It's going to be Craig Ray eh, in the host chair, and he'll be talking to Doogie Doogie with the guest. And if you've heard these boys before eh, on Jersey Night, you'll know they're absolutely eh, different level. They're going to analyse, deconstruct, and just bring it all home, what, what, how we're all feeling as a support um, before Sunday's game. They're going to have a look at, for example, the starting 11 that they would prefer um, as knowledgeable Rangers supporters uh, going to this game at Hamden, and maybe look at what they think Michael Beale, the starting 11 Michael Beale's actually going to field. What is this game going to mean uh, for Michael Beale's career as Rangers manager? What's it going to mean for Ange Postacoglu's career as Celtic manager? How's this going to uh, affect Rangers' immediate short-term history and long-term uh, going forward as we have a chance to secure, finally, all three of the major trophies since we've come back uh, from our little spell in the lower leagues? As I say, it's far too much. We need to get the ball rolling now. Uh, I can't wait to Friday, never mind uh, wait to Sunday. There's been no football to keep us going uh, this midweek. So I want to just maybe touch on something that... Uh, you know, quality commentators like uh, Craig and Doogie wouldn't want to touch with a barge pole tomorrow night. I'm going to throw a few of my kind of crackpot theories at you just to keep us going, just to set the mood, um, just to get a kind of cup final fever build up uh, going. Michael Beale, he's the man I've been uh, since he took over uh, back in November. The one kind of criticism or worry, uh, maybe just the most interesting aspect almost sometimes of Michael Beale's management has been his press conferences, how he comes across uh, in these pressers. So on Tuesday, we had him. Almost kind of prize fighter way in type scenario where him and Posta Coglu uh, were, were sat together just, just for a photo op. Obviously, did the press conference separately in the press room uh, at Hamden, but I couldn't help uh, measuring them up against each other in terms of one particular aspect, and that was the length of the press conference. Um, because I feel as if Michael Beale talks too much. And for example, on Tuesday, there he uh, was he was going on waffling on about uh, derbies and the Sao Paulo state 
he was talking about in the Sao Paulo playing against Corinthians. He's talking about Santos uh, playing against Palmeiras. He's talking about Chelsea playing against Arsenal. I'm like, that's not even a derby, is it? I mean, it's a London derby, but surely Chelsea's kind of derby in recent years has been with with, with Spurs. What are you going on about? Earlier on in that, he'd been kind of talking, kind of explaining what he meant by the phrase poor player. And I'm like, what, what, why are you getting derailed like this? This is too much. You know, the, the press are kind of taking the mic at you. But what was happening there, when I look back on it, uh, was Michael Beale had been asked. Now, I, I, like yourself, I've got used to most of the voices that are asking questions at these uh, Rangers pressers. But one I didn't recognise, and uh, apologies if I've got this wrong, it sounded like an Irish fella um, was asking Michael Beale what he said to his family and friends when he was trying to explain to them uh, just why the, the old firm derby was so great. And this is because Michael, being the diplomat and the cheery outgoing bloke that he is, was talking up the old firm derby, talking up uh, how attractive this game was in and of itself uh, as a fixture. And this chap was obviously trying to kind of allude to the unsavoury side of the old firm, the, the sectarian element uh, that, that's, that's kind of cost it uh, for, for decades Michael B was trying to take it away from that. So he just kept talking derbies in general. And uh, he, I think he successfully managed to negotiate his way from uh, the more salacious uh, side of things. Same with the, the poor player uh, chat. He was actually, what he'd done was in, in, in acknowledging the fact that this game will be settled uh, on the day. There's no replay. There's you know no second chance. It's a, it's a, it's a cup game that's going to be played uh, to the death, even if it's penalties involved. He was saying he hoped to be settled by football rather than some poor player, you know, making a mistake. And he thought that sounds like I mean a poor player, a bad player. I, I, it might sound, it might be taken as me criticising one of them. I think I've got a, a poor player or two in the Rangers squad, and you know, that will affect uh, my squad morale going into this game. Or it might sound like I'm saying I think there's a poor Celtic player uh, who might end up costing them the cup, and that's going to go straight up in the the notice board in the uh, Celtic Park dressing room. So he's just collecting that. And I'm starting, even when you, I suddenly was starting to kind of change my mind here because the talking too much thing is part of Michael Beale's character. And I always remember uh, Alec McLeish, a man who's kind of, you know, basically started off in the same situation as Michael Beale here. And we hope it continues, that that parallel continues because Alec McLeish drew um, his first two league games uh, against Celtic in the first kind of half season that he took over as Rangers manager but he beat them in both cup competitions that season it set him up for a treble uh, the following season and Alec McLeish always spoke about when he first got into management I think he was player manager of Motherwell they were they were getting beat at half time um, Motherwell and he thought well how am I going to rectify this half time team talk I've learned my trade um, and I'll as a player, I learned from the, the greatest manager of all, Sir Alec Ferguson. So I'll go in there and I'll hit them with a classic Fergie hairdryer. So we basically kind of bollocked, gutted out each one of the, the Motherwell players in the dressing room at half time. But the problem is, Alec McLeish isn't that kind of guy. He said, I wasn't as angry as I was trying to make it myself out to be. Um, and the players realise that, you know, dressing rooms are, are, are kind of merciless. You can't, you can't be pretentious in any way. You've just got to be yourself. And that's what Alec McLeish realised that day. He had to. Um, if he's going to be angry with his players, it had to be a genuine anger. You, you can't act it. Um, you, you have to be yourself. And it looks like Michael Beale, a really self-effacing guy, a really outgoing guy, very chatty, and obviously a complete anal retentive when it comes to the football, comes to stats. He loves talking about football. So he's throwing, the, he's not being pretentious, he's throwing in what I think were genuine little moments of uh, kind of mind games, kind of little you know guru hand grenades uh, in there. And he was doing it within his own personality, so it didn't clang. I don't know if you've seen these documentaries uh, uh, about the Second World War, but there was a thing I was reminded of when I, what, every time I, every time I hear Michael Beale speaking these days. During the, the Second World War, when the RAF would go bombing uh, Germany, to evade German radar, the pilots would throw this stuff, these aluminium strips called chaff, they would throw this chaff out of the cockpit, so it would get picked up in German radar. It's, it's camouflaged. The German would just see this whole mass of metal coming floating down towards them. They wouldn't be able to see uh, the British bombers, so the old Messerschmitts didn't know where to go to, to, to have a go at the British bombers. And I think Michael Beale is doing the same thing. He's throwing so much out there that his opponents, our opponents, don't know what to focus on, don't know what he's actually really thinking um, and what they're going to come up against uh, when they play Rangers. For example, the, the real meat of the interview uh, with Michael Beale, the stuff that we all want to know is... Is the squad? What's the what's the squad situation? What's the injury situation? And I don't think, despite Michael Beale trying to tell us 
that um, Malik Tillman, Ryan Jack and John Lundstrom were all injured for Saturday's trip to Livingston and are struggling for fitness uh, ahead of the cup final. I don't think any of us believes that. What was it? It was supposed to be respectively uh, a hamstring, a calf and uh, an ankle for these three players. It's not. I, I just, you know, I've seen, I saw John Lundstrom uh, leaving Ibrox in the old moon book after that game in Ross County where he got injured. So he might, he might genuinely be struggling, but we don't think uh, that all of them are. I think we just wanted to avoid playing them on the plastic uh, at Livingston and, and Saturday to, to doubly make sure that they're fit. Uh, and available for this coming Sunday, the same with Kamar Roof. Now, that is the easiest lie to tell as a Rangers manager. The most injured player uh, in Rangers history, Kamar Roof, he comes on for a wee cameo appearance, gets his goal on Saturday there against Livingston. Oh, he's injured as well. He picked up a wee injury as well. Nobody's going to disbelieve that, but at the same time, in light of everything else, Michael Beale is saying, I don't particularly believe it. Uh, the clincher for me was Scotty Arfield, you know, who hasn't played uh, for a while now. Scotty Arfield, who is 34 years old, He's been injured and he's going to start training only at the end of this week, but he will be in the reckoning uh, for the squad for Sunday. Now, this does one of two things. It either says that Scott Arfield's actually fine, he's, he's totally fit, and Michael Beard has to be fancying him recently, uh, that doesn't want him in his squad, or Scott Arfield genuinely is unfit. I would think a guy of his age, there's no way he's going to be fit enough to play on Sunday, but because he scored against Celtic, uh, and the last time we met Celtic at Hamden, Ange Postacoglu's got to think about that. Everybody knows, everybody in Scottish football knows that Scott Arfield is a supremely intelligent player um, who can change a game uh, in the, the spin of a coin. So they'll have to accommodate, they'll have to plan for the eventuality that Scott Arfield does appear in that game, whether it be at the start of the game or during extra time, whatever happens. So I think it's actually great by Michael Beale. I think this is actually, it's coming across really well. I, I think I did, as I say, it's been a, a kind of desert of actual information, stuff to, to, to properly get your teeth into uh, in this really long midweek before this before this cup final. But one of the things I took out of that press conference was a thing that I've always been really kind of harping on about for the last couple of seasons in the face of all these memes we're getting from Celtic fans, from opposition fans telling us you know, that we've only won you know, two trophies. And uh, Listen, we saw the, the Union Bears, who I love, I love the Union Bears. I didn't agree with that one uh, on Saturday, the, the banner at Livingston, but I think it came out of, I think there's a dispute going on just now within the Brimley Collective and the board, and this is maybe the way they were, they were expressing it, but there's like two trophies in 11 years, what a criticism, but what Michael Beale kind of hinted at, he, he mentioned the fact that we've won the Scottish Cup and the league eh, in the last two years, and in that same time Celtic have won the Scottish the, the league and the league cup, eh, meaning we've actually kind of won better you know, domestic trophies than Celtic uh, in a kind of two-year period, if you want to shorten that down. Now, look, Celtic are favourites to win the treble this season. Never mind their favourites to win the game on Sunday, uh, quite rightly, because of the, the form they're in. Uh, they're favourites to, to sweep the board uh, this season, and they're obviously, they, they look like they're, they're going to win the league no matter what we do on Sunday. But it would be beautiful. Uh, just there would come a moment, if we did win this game on Sunday, that we've actually won all three uh, of the major domestic trophies, as well as reaching a European final, as well as qualifying uh, for the Champions League group stages through beating two quality sides in Union St. Jules and PSV Eindhoven, where the Celtic qualified directly. We've done that where the Celtic have only won two trophies in the same period. Now, it, it, it wouldn't hold uh, if Celtic going to win the, the league in the Scottish Cup. It wouldn't hold for very long, but it gives us a great advantage to do that thing that Michael Beale was talking about, improving us by 20%. No matter what happens on Sunday, Michael says, he's going to try and improve us by 20%. Before the end of the season, that's still going to be a, a task for him. His inbox is still going to be overflowing on Monday, he was saying. In a way, he was trying to play down um, the, the effect of a defeat uh, on Sunday. But I think the only way he can improve us between, by 20% uh, before the end of the season is by winning this game on Sunday. And suddenly we could throw out a meme, you know, a kind of disingenuous but maybe effective meme about what, uh, about what Celtic have actually achieved compared to ourselves in a shorter time span, a more immediate time span. Um, and you look at Ange Postacoglu, as I say, I was getting so desperate for information. I, I thought, well, Michael, you're talking to, initially I thought Bill was talking too long. And I, I looked at it on YouTube, the time of his press conference was 18 minutes. I looked at Postacoglu's, actually 17 minutes. Wasn't that much shorter. Um, and that's coming from a man who obviously is trying to portray himself as kind of taciturn, as kind of gruff, um, very much trying to be the, the man whose team does the talking for him. 
Now, obviously, I'm biased. I'm seeing all through uh, the blue blinkers. I want, you know, every Celtic manager to be either the most evil person on earth or the most pathetic person on earth. So, you know, take this with a pinch of salt. But it seemed to me that towards the end of his presser, uh, Poster Coglu was getting a bit kind of carnaptious almost uh, with the, the idea that him and Bill were in the same scenario. He mentioned the fact that he's been a manager for 20 odd years and that he would hope that does the talking for him. I think Bill's getting to him just by being cheery and chatty. Um, and it's true. I mean, Poster Coglu's been in the management game far longer than, than Michael, who for all his coaching has only been a manager in his own right uh, for, for less than a year. But I think it, it showed that. Posta Coglu, while trying to portray himself as the, the more experienced and um, the more laid back uh, about this game, he realises that it could turn the momentum, certainly turn the psychology uh, of who's dominating Scottish football, what it's been the last 12 months, it could turn it on its head slightly. Um, if you can turn on your head slightly, that's, I'll certainly be doing that if we win the Cup um, on Sunday. But I think it's it's another reason why this game is so massive. It's not just about getting the cup itself. Listen, guys, that will do is that's enough of me ranting and raving. I'm going to come back on Saturday, and whether that's just me talking to a mirror about you know my, my favourite pie at the 13 League Cup finals I've attended uh, previously, or, or whatever it is, we'll get some more content out to you because this is a this is a massive one. This is this is a huge game coming up, and uh, we just want to keep you guys up to speed and I'm really just using it as a massive self-help with the Jersnet community uh, as much as you listen to us I love the I, I love the fact that I have somebody to talk to um, when it comes to getting rid of the, the tension that I'm feeling I'm sure we all are uh, in the build up to this huge game uh, as I say Doogie uh, and Craig will be with you tomorrow night Colin will be here on Sunday night uh, hosting the usual review pod on a Sunday night no matter the result uh, of the game on Sunday and uh, if we do win well I'll certainly be outside uh, Hamden with uh, an immediate post-match reaction pod to get a, a flavour of what would be a momentous victory for us and just remember um, the other mob I mean if, if, you, if you've ever watched the film with Neil and I Uncle Monty and, and with Neil himself are old Harrovians and they refer to Eton as the other place now, these are the two private schools in England that have produced probably the most prime ministers the royalty uh, attends these schools. So all Fashion Sakala is doing is reminding everybody that Rangers are the establishment club. And why would that offend anybody? Have a good night, folks. See you later.